Welcome to the RuneScape audiobook series, narrated by Divided Story. Today's quest, Gertrude's Cat. We last left our friends near Side Doric Shack within the Kingdom of Esgarnia. Following the events of the adventurer upgrading his combat gear, we find them within the capital city of Falador, in a local pub. I really don't think this is a good idea, said Lotharius as he fell forward nearly slamming his head against the countertop. Would you like another wizard's mind bomb? Asked Kaylee. Uh, Letharius murmured. I think he means yes, said the adventurer, as Kaylee shrugged, pouring him another drink, and then walking away. All the time we knew each other, I didn't know you weren't a good drinker, said the adventurer. Letharius, clearly in a daze, turns and looks at his friend. You might be, he said as he passes out right in front of him. As soon as this happens, the adventurer freezes as he gazes at a warrior wearing a blue party hat who enters the bar. The warrior proceeds over to the bar top on the right side of Lotharius, who makes an inaudible noise. Barkeep, she said softly. The adventurer, still amazed of the spectacle before him, blurts out. <sighs> hey! The warrior's glance faces the adventurer's direction. She turns and nods at him, and then turns her attention to Kaylee, as she approaches the counter. I'd like a dwarven stout, please, said the warrior. Right, that'll be a 35 GP surcharge, responds Kaylee. Yeah, that import is my favorite beverage. As the adventurer witnessing the conversation and still watching the warrior, takes note of her attire. She's wearing a small shirt, armored chaps with studded boots, with a pretty shiny cape. What's that weapon you have wrapped on your waist? Asks the adventurer. The warrior glances back at the adventurer, and answered. It's an abyssal whip. Before she had time to finish, a large willy cat jumps into the adventurer's face. Gah! Exhaled the adventurer. Down, Jackie, down. As the cat backed away from the adventurer, turning around one last time and hissing. What a nice feline you have, murmured the adventurer. There's strength in numbers, replied the warrior. Regaining his thoughts, the adventurer relaxed and then asked. So, you have a feline companion. How did you manage that? In the one of the largest cities in the nearby region lies Varrock. Within that city, there's a cat lady named Gertrude. If you want a cat, you'd have to visit her or find a stray and train it, replied the warrior as she was petting her cat, Jackie, who was now laying down on the counter. The adventurer, liking the idea of another companion, turns his attention to Kaylee, calling her over. Kaylee, can you please watch Lotharius? He's out cold, and I'd like to go visit a woman named Gertrude within Varrock. There are some beds upstairs, we'll take him up if he's still out when we close for the night," said Kaylee. With the adventurer now grabbing his belongings and remembering he's a little tipsy, stands up straight and starts to walk towards the door before turning around. Hey, before I forget, I don't think I got your name, warrior. It's Elfinlox. As the adventurer raises his hand to signal goodbye and walks away. As the adventurer was making his way towards Varrock, he had to pass the dwarven territories once again. As he got close to the ridge near the south side of Ice Mountain, he ran into his dwarven friends. Hey, Tootsie Foot, it's so good to see you. Where are you headed now? Asked Norcal. It's good to see you too. I'm on my way to Varrock, actually. I'm going to find another companion, responded the adventurer. Where's Lotharius? Barry asked. I had to leave him at the Rising Sun Inn in Falador. We were drinking, and apparently that wizard can't hold his liquor. Ah, uh, well, save travels, friend. Peace be with you. Thanks, Nurkal, the adventurer responded, and he continued onwards. A few hours later, the adventurer approaches the western gate of Varrock's walls near a large bank. The city is very alive and active this time of day. After taking it in, the adventurer walks up to one of the guards. Do you know where a woman by the name of Gertrude lives? Asked the adventurer. Yeah, I do. She lives in the outskirts of town just west of here. You'll notice the house, there's laundry on the side of it, replied the guard. Thanks, said the adventurer, as he turned around and headed west towards his destination. Upon approaching the house, the adventurer sees a woman circling the front porch, flailing her arms around while wearing a pleasant-looking bonnet. Hey, are you okay? asked the adventurer. Do I look okay? My kids are driving me crazy. Look at me being a jerk again, sorry. I've lost something recently and I can't find her. Said the woman. Lost who? Asked the adventurer. My cat Fluffs. Poor Fluffs. I hope you're okay. Said the woman. Oh, are, are you Gertrude? 
The adventurer responded. Yes, I am, but I can't get friendly with anyone until I find my cat, said Gertrude. I'll help you look for her, said the adventurer. That's great. The only issue is I have no idea where she could be. Two of my sons, Shillop and Willow, saw Fluff's last. They're out and about playing in the marketplace again, and I can't leave my other two children here unattended, exclaimed Gertrude. I can head into the market, and I'll go ask them for you. Great. Before you go, here's a bucket of milk in case Fluffy is thirsty, and here's some doggo leaves from my back. Yard. Fluffy loves the way they feel on her whiskers, so I rub these herbs on her food, too. Here, take this sardine, said Gertrude. I'll be right back. As he walked away from Gertrude's home, not long after, we find the adventurer within the marketplace of Iraq. There's many people in the town center to take note of, trading silks, buying supplies, and reading the local newspaper. The adventurer looks around and finds two young boys playing near and in a tree behind some of the trading stalls. Being the only kids in the marketplace, the adventurer figures that it's Gertrude's children and walks over. Hello there, I've been looking for you, said the adventurer, as he notices he definitely surprised the child, who then turns around and exclaims. I didn't mean to take it, I just forgot to pay. Well, I'm not here about your petty theft. I'm actually looking for Willow and Shillop, said the adventurer. Oh, phew. I'm Willow, what's up? Replied Willow. I'm helping your mother find Fluffs. Have you seen her? Asked the adventurer. Last time me and my brother saw the cat, she followed us to our secret play area. Willow responded. And where is that? If I told you, that wouldn't be a secret. Willow responded. The younger brother Shillop, hanging from a tree, overhears this conversation, letting go of the tree and landing onto the ground. Shillop then walks over to Willow, pulling him aside, and then walks up to the adventurer, as if he's about to whisper. Well, because you asked they're a bit short on cash, perhaps we can both help each other out, said Shillop. Um, how much cash are we talking here? The adventurer hesitantly responded. Ten gold pieces. Ten gold pieces? Eh, I'll handle this. A hundred gold pieces should handle our expenses for telling you where our secret hideout is. The adventurer, now baffled, responds. One one hundred gold pieces? Why on Gillinor's name would I pay you that? Look, I'm doing your mom a favor. You shouldn't, but we won't help otherwise, Chief. We never liked that cat anyway, so you're paying us for our grief. Replied Willow. The adventurer, surprised to see these young children so quick wit, hands over the one hundred gold pieces with the two boys who are now smiling. Willow then responds. We play at an abandoned lumber mill to the northeast of here, just beyond the Jolly Boar Inn. I saw Fluff running around in there. Anything else? Asked the adventurer. You have to find the broken fence to get in. I'm sure you can manage that. Shillop whispered. Yes, I can, the adventurer responded, as he departs and heads northeast as directed. Upon coming to a large statue and an empty bench, the adventurer sees the lumber yard just north of where he is. There it is! the adventurer said, as he eagerly jolts over. As he approaches the lumber yard, he notices a sleeping man at the large window near the front gate. I should be careful to not wake him. As the adventurer goes alongside the western perimeter, finding a broken part of the fence described by the two children. Climbing through, the adventurer now lies in the middle of the lumber yard as he hears several different meows, with these coming from all different directions around him. While hearing all of this, he looks up to see a cat on a ledge on the second floor of a nearby building. Fluffs! The adventurer exclaimed, while he rushed over to the building to find a ladder. While he climbed up the ladder, he could hear Fluffs moving around and clawing the floor of the wooden building. Fluffs, I'm so glad I found you! Exclaimed the adventurer, as Fluffs hissed and tried to scratch him. Kitty! Irked the adventurer, followed by another hiss. Perhaps the cat wants something, he thought as he grabs the bucket of milk from earlier and places it in front of Fluffs. After Fluffs drank some of the milk, the adventurer attempted to get near the cat again, who got clawed in the process. Ow! Okay, Fluffs, are you hungry? While tossing the doggo leaves, seasoned sardines over to Fluffs, who eats it whole and continues to hiss. Okay, okay, okay. Surely I am missing something, the adventurer said, as he remembers from earlier the meows from all around him. Perhaps there's another cat here that Fluffs is trying to find. That's it, the adventurer thought. The adventurer, now certain what the issue is, proceeds back down the ladder to the first floor of the wooden building and starts to search some of the crates nearby. After a lot of tries and several failed attempts, the adventurer finds a small kitten who is scared. It's okay, little one. I got you, the adventurer whispered as he picked up the kitten and placed it on his shoulder. After coming back to Fluffs, 
The kitten and Fluffs were very excited to see one another, as the kitten was purring and rubbing up against her mother. After a short purring session, the two cats leave. I think they should be headed home now, said the adventurer. The adventurer, now returning to Gertrude's house, excited to share what happened, watched Gertrude come out of her front door. Hey there, Gertrude. Fluffs ran off with her kitten. Did they come here? said the adventurer. I noticed. Fluffs returned moments before you arrived with her baby. Thank you so very much for your help. Gertrude replied happily, as she gave the adventurer a hug. Good. I'm glad. I don't know how to say thank you. I have no real material possessions. I do have kittens, though. I would sell them to my cousins in West Ardoin, as they are suffering a huge rat problem there. But he hasn't come into town as of late, said Gertrude. I'd love one. That's honestly why I came to find you, Gertrude, said the adventurer. Here you go. As Gertrude hands the adventurer a little white kitten, the kitten then looks up to him and lets out a little noise. <coughs> Thank you, Gertrude, said the adventurer. We now see the adventurer and his newfound kitten walk towards the sunset together on their way back to Falador to meet up with their good friend, Lotharius. <laughs> Hey everybody, Divided Story here. I did want to take a minute to talk to you guys. In the last video audiobook, a lot of people voice that they really want to see Druidic Ritual. So I know this is Gertrude's cat, not the one you were really hoping for, but if you comment that you really want to get Druidic Ritual, I'm going to put it together. And the reason why is because Letharius goes on that adventure all on his own, which is making the quest very fun to write and very fun to read. So. If that's something that you guys would love to hear, please leave more comments down below. Basically, just letting me know that's really something you want, and I'll put the time into it, and we'll make it happen. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this RuneScape Quest audiobook. As always, like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one.